Hi, this is Stamper, an artboard-oriented programming environment for the popular P5.js JavaScript library. What's a stamp? This is a stamp. It has a name, it has parameters or arguments, and it has code, which is all shown here on the graphics frame. Every function in Stamper has its own stamp. But why did we make Stamper? We were inspired by the ergonomics of design software like Sketch, which has artboards that make it easy to duplicate and rearrange the canvases you're working with to compare design ideas. But we wanted to combine that with the P5.js programming language, which is already popular among designers and artists. Here's a sketch. Let's take this sketch and look at it in Stamper. We'll open up a blank Stamper and paste it into the importer. We can see all the same functions we had in our P5.js web editor are now here. Setup, draw, and size dot. Because size dot has these optional parameters, we can actually visualize it right here on the graphics frame. So just like you can in Sketch, let's duplicate uh, object. Now we can create size rect and we'll change ellipse to rect. Now here we can use size rect instead and quickly try an alternative to our idea. This is what makes Stamper powerful. You can easily experiment without having to comment out or lose your previous version. Stamper also has lines which visualize references like variable usage or function calls in your code. Here we can see these two global variables, x pause and max size. I wonder where they're being used. Let's just shift click on that stamp and it can show us all the places it's being used. Let's say we stop using max size here and we specify it manually and no longer will that be pointing at size rect. Stamper also has a layer manager along the left, which allows you to hide and show things. Let's say we don't want to have size dot here anymore because we're not using it right now. We can hide it and clean up the lines, but the function still remains in our code base if we wanted to use it later. We can also click if we can't find what we're looking for to be moved to that particular stamp, which is especially useful in large projects. So, how is all this working? As I mentioned, these are all graphics frames. Graphics frame, instructions, parameters, and name. But these aren't separate programs. What we're doing instead is generating artificial payloads for each one of these graphics frames and throwing those away when you end up exporting your code later. We can see that this myrect is called by the draw function but this would not be preserved later. It's only used for the local graphics frame. Let's save our current Stamper project and open it in Atom just to see how this would work. We'll call this test local and the test local will go here. And now we'll open that in Atom. Go to the sketch file and click play. We can see it's the exact same thing. It's important to note that Stamper is not its own language, but just an editor for the P5 language, which means it supports all the same features and can be used for any of your existing P5 projects. We'll go back to Stamper quickly and show one more thing you can do in Stamper, which is upload your projects to share them. Click Share and Publish Current Project. We'll call this Alt Dot, just for fun, and click Publish. Now it gets a unique URL, which lets you share it with anyone and they can easily go to this URL to start where you left off. Finally, if you want to learn more about how Stamper works, you can go to authoring environments forward slash Stamper and see more of our examples, understand how you can use Stamper on the web or on Mac, and also see a preprint of the paper we wrote about Stamper for Kai Late Breaking Works 2020. We had lots of fun making Stamper, and we hope you have just as much fun using Stamper to explore P5.js in a brand new way.